early locomotives and trains presented many problems to the traveler. But as the railroad industry grew, larger, more powerful, faster and safer engines and cars were developed. With electrical power came our all-electric trains. In some sections, electric motors have almost entirely replaced the steam locomotive. Another development, the perfection of the diesel engine, made possible the modern streamlined equipment, which glides so swiftly and silently to its destination. The creation of new designs for steam locomotives and cars also has occurred in the march of progress. Our railroads have contributed more than any other means of transportation to the development of our country. The spread of our railroad network is shown by this map. In 1830, an experiment. Within 20 years, a great industry. By 1870, the continent spanned. By 1890, well-established lines of transportation nationwide. Today, all sections of our country closely linked. The invention of the gasoline engine gave to the world another kind of power, which made possible the automobile. In growing from a two-cylinder, hand-cranked, and sometimes exasperating experiment into today's speedy, powerful vehicle, the automobile has made great changes in our ways of living. America's millions of automobiles have demanded the replacement of roads such as this by a system of broad, durable highways. The growth of our system of federal highways is shown on this map over that of the railways. And now, the development of state highways. Transportation has played an important part in the industrial development of our country. Raw materials need to be taken over land and over countless waterways to great manufacturing centers where they are made into hundreds of products for shipment to distributing centers and from there to individual users. Land transportation ends at great harbor terminals. Here, ocean-going ships wait to receive both passengers and cargo of every description destined to the four corners of the earth. Dwellers in our cities have created other needs for transportation. Private automobiles, supplemented by fleets of taxicabs, buses, and streetcars, have caused our city streets to become congested with traffic. This has led to the building of underground railroads called subways. Here, under crowded city streets, people are transported with amazing speed and safety. Tracks also have been erected above street levels for elevated trains to transport city dwellers to and from their daily tasks. People not caring to live in large cities where they work are carried from small suburban towns with dispatch by countless commuters' trains. The task of distributing foods, merchandise, and other materials necessary for life in towns and cities is performed by many kinds of trucks. The importance of this means of transportation has been made clear by the sudden interruption of such service. A city without trucks soon becomes in dire need. Thus, the development of transportation has broken down the many barriers to human relationships. The hearts of mountains have been pierced by railroad tunnels. Mountain sides have been cut open and highways planted there. Vast areas of wilderness, formerly seldom traveled by man, are now crossed in modern streamlined trains with ever-increasing speed and safety. Modern highways have replaced the once lonely trails over which the early traveler labored. High above broad rivers, we have built strong bridges of steel, planned so as to meet our needs for years to come. We no longer pause at the banks of rivers, but cross upon these bridges with traffic of every description, or on swift-moving boats, making highways of streams which once were barriers to progress. 
Furthermore, our land transportation devices may gather in great numbers at the mouths of river tunnels. Here, under the watchful eyes of police authority, they may enter great steel tubes laid beneath the river's bed and pass swiftly to the opposite shore regardless of weather or season. And what of the widespread seas, those last barriers to travel and commerce? They too have been conquered by modern transportation devices. Great ships now take us and our goods to the farthest parts of the earth. They defy distance and storm and bring the world to us. They cross the most tempestuous seas in comfort and safety and within a few days. Lastly, we have scorned all natural barriers of land and sea and have leaped into the air in our never satisfied desire to go more quickly from place to place. Through the air, our continent may now be spanned from coast to coast in less than a single day. Over the intricate map of our railroads and highways have been blazed the paths now regularly followed by thousands of airplanes. Within the past century, our streetcars, automobiles, elevated trains, subways, passenger and freight trains, together with many kinds of trucks, have helped to develop our country and to make possible our industrial civilization. The demands of our modern life call constantly for greater speed, greater convenience, and greater safety in transportation. Many kinds of ships on river, lake, and ocean continue to offer improved service. For commerce or for recreation, these vessels fly throughout all waters and help us to exchange goods and ideas with the world's people. Speed is most in demand in the work of surmounting time and space. And our air machines, by almost daily new speed and distance records, did fare to contribute most in the future. Who can foretell what problems these improvements will create as shores of the most widely separated nations are brought within a few hours' flight?